Kuzuzangpo, a warm welcome to Bhutan e-learning program. I'm Sabina Kafle, a teacher of Changang Kameda Secondary School. Well, before I take you all through my lesson, I hope and my prayers that you and your family members are all safe and healthy. So today, I'll be taking you all through a session on mathematics on the topic data involving one variable. Well, math often deals with data sets. Where do these data sets come from? Well, these numbers may be the result of scientific measurements, surveys, or any other data collection methods. Now, in mathematics, we use various methods to organize and understand these data sets. So today, we'll focus on four important key concepts. Firstly, we'll learn how to create a stem and leaf plot. Secondly, we'll learn how to organize the data into a frequency table and create a histogram. Thirdly, we'll find the five number summary. And finally, we'll learn how to construct a box and a whisker plot. Let us begin with stem and leaf plot. What sort of data could be used to create a stem and leaf plot? Can you all think for a while? Okay, let me help you all to answer this. A stem and a leaf plot is generally used when the data has multi-digit number by listing it in order of place value. Now, let us discuss about a stem and leaf plot in detail. The plot has two columns. The first column is called as the stem, and this will list all the digits in the tens place and be warned in order. A vertical line now divides the stem from the leaf. The second column is called as the leaves, which shows the ones place of each number in the data set also in order. Now, let us consider this set of data, which represents the price of a book in 15 different bookstores. Now, whichever method we use, the first and the foremost thing that we need to do is always arrange the data in ascending order, that is, from the least to the greatest. Now, let us consider this set of data. In this case, we can use the digits of the tens and the hundreds place of each number to make the stem. Since the minimum value in our data set is 95, we'll begin our stem from 9. And the next stem will be 10, followed by 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We will go on till 16. Now, why do we go on till 16? Because the maximum value in our data set is 165. So we are planning to keep two digits in the stem and one digit in the leaf. Now, if you look at our set of data, since the minimum value in our data set is 95, 9 is already there reflected in the stem. So the last digit of this number will go to the leaf. If we take the next stem, 10, since we do not have any numbers in the hundreds, we leave these leaf empty because we don't have any numbers in hundreds. We move on to the next stem, which is 11. So if we look at our data set, we have our next number as 110, which means from 110, the tens place and the hundreds place are already reflected in the stem, which is 11. So the last digit of this number will go in the stem. Similarly, we'll keep on inserting the leaves of all the digits in the data set. And this is finally how our stem and leaf plot looks like. Let us now move on to histograms. Histograms are series of connected bars that represents the frequency of a continuous data. To construct a histogram, we first need to construct a frequency table. Let us take the same set of data that we took for the stem and leaf plot. I'm reminding you all again that whenever or whatever method we use, the first thing that we need to do is always arrange the data in ascending order. Well, if we look at the frequency table, the frequency table will have three columns. The first column represents the class interval, the second column represents the tally, and the third column represents the frequency. 
Now, the first thing that we need to do here is create or design the class intervals. It is up to us to design how we want the class intervals and of what size. But one thing that we need to keep in mind here is that we must have a minimum of five class intervals, which you also call it as bins. And we need to have a maximum of 13 bins. So we can create any size of class intervals between five to 13. We can create or design our class intervals such that all the numbers in the data set fits into the class interval. For our set of data, we can create at least eight class intervals. You all can see here in our class interval that we can begin from 90. Now, why do we begin from 90? Is because the minimum value in our data set is 95. So we can start our class interval from 90 and go on till 100. This makes a bin width of 10. Similarly, the next interval must start from 100 and go on till 110 with same bin width. Let us take this first class interval, that is from 90 to 100. Always keep in mind that the lower limit, that is 90, is included in the class interval, but the upper limit, 100, will not be included in this class interval. So, in our set of data, 95 will fall in this class interval, that is between 90 to 100. But if you look at the next value in our data set, that is 100, 100 will not be included in the first class interval, but rather it will be included in the second class interval. Now, why do we include 100 in this class interval of 100 to 110? That is because in this class interval, the lower limit 100 will be included but the upper limit 110 will not be included. So we have just one data in our data set which falls in this class interval. Therefore, we draw a tally and write its frequency as one correspondingly. Now in our data set, we do not have any numbers in the next class interval, that is from 110 to 120. So we leave it empty and the frequency will be zero in this case. Similarly, we have to take the numbers of our data set one by one and we keep on inserting these numbers into their respective class intervals one by one. And then we keep on drawing the tally and then write the frequency respectively. Likewise, we fit in all the numbers of our data set into the respective class intervals. As we complete, we will find here that the total frequency will be always equal to the number of data in our data set. Now let me take you all through the steps of how we draw a histogram one by one. Step one, we need to draw the x-axis and the y-axis with equal intervals. The upper limit of the interval will be equal to the lower limit of the next interval, making the data continuous. We represent, in our case, the number of stores in the y-axis and the price range of the book in the x-axis. The bars in the histogram will be of equal width. Now, draw the height of each bar corresponding to the frequency of the bin it represents. So this is how a histogram will look like. One most important thing here is, after the histogram has been drawn, we always need to give the title of the histogram as to what information the histogram represents. Let us now move on to a box and a whisker plot. A box plot summarizes the data using the median, the upper quartile, lower quartile, and the two extremes. The first step here is to take the set of numbers given. We always need to arrange these numbers in ascending order. Step two is to find the median. To find the median, please remember that median is the middle value of the whole data set. Now, for our set of data, there are 10 numbers in our data set, which means this is an even set of data. So therefore, when we have an even set of data, there will be two middle values which divides the data into halves, which means 
towards the left side of the middle values and towards the rest, right side of the middle values, there will be equal numbers. So in our case, 7 and 8 are middle values. The mean of these two values will give us the median. So therefore, 7 plus 8 divided by 2, we get it as 7.5 and that becomes our median, which is represented as Q2. Well, now we need to divide our data set into two equal halves. Since we have 10 numbers in our data set, while dividing our data into two equal halves, the first half of the data will have five numbers and the second half of the data will have another five numbers. Now, using the first half of the data, we can determine the lower quartile. To find the lower quartile, we just use the first half of the data. As you can see here in the data that first half has five numbers, which means this becomes an odd set of data. So when we have an odd set of data, there will be only one middle value in the data set. So therefore, for the first half of the data, 5 is the middle value and that becomes the lower quartile. To calculate the upper quartile, we use the second half of the data. So the second half of the data also has 5 numbers, which means this is also an odd set of data. So therefore, it will have just one middle value. So in our case, 11 is the middle value in our second half of the data. So this becomes the upper quartile. The lower extreme of the data set is the minimum value in the data set. So therefore, 2 is the lower extreme for our set of data. Similarly, the upper extreme is the maximum value in the data set. In our case, 20 is the upper extreme. To calculate the range, we need to find the difference of the maximum value and the minimum value. So since our maximum value is 20 and the minimum value is 2, the difference of these two becomes 18. So the range is 18 for our data set. So now we got our five number summary. Five number summary is another name for the visual representation of a box and a whisker plot. The five number summary consists of the minimum value in the data set, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the maximum value in the data set. So for our set of data, we have our minimum value as 2. The lower quartile, that is Q1, is 5. The median, which is represented by Q2, is 7.5. The upper quartile, represented by Q3, is 11 and the maximum value is 20. Once we get our five number summary, we can easily draw our box and a whisker plot. Let me now take you all through the steps of how we construct a box and a whisker plot. Step number one, draw a number scale appropriate for the five number summary. Draw dots above the scale to locate the lower quartile, median and the upper quartile. Draw a box with left side at the lower quartile and the right side at the upper quartile. Next, we draw a vertical line at the median equal to the height of the box. And finally, we draw the whiskers, which are actually lines to connect the side of the box to the maximum and the minimum value respectively. So this is how a box and a whisker plot looks like. As you see in a box and whisker plot, the first interval begins from the minimum value till the lower quartile. This represents 25% of the data. Then the second class interval begins from the lower quartile till the median, and this represents another 25% of the data. The next interval, that is the third interval, begins from the median till the upper quartile, representing another 25% of the data. And finally, the fourth interval begins from the upper quartile till the maximum value. This also represents 25% of the data. So this is how we create a box and a whisker plot. As we come to the end of the session, I have a question for you all to try. One week after planting, the heights of 30 bean plants were measured 
and this is the set of data. You are going to take this set of data and you are going to create a stem and leaf plot. Similarly, you will use the same interval that you have used in the stem and leaf plot and create a histogram. You are then going to find the five number summary and then you are going to create a box and a whisker plot. Thank you for attending my session. Do keep in touch with mathematics. Till then, take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep washing your hands regularly.